Hey guys, Jack Bennett here from ICanPlayDrums.com and welcome to another Custom Studio lesson. Today's lesson's a little bit different. I don't normally um, cover percussion in amongst grooves like this and um, this comes from Mary Henderson from New Jersey in the States and Mary's written in, Hi Jack, I'm 54 years old and playing a band with my three sisters. Awesome, Mary. In the middle of one of our songs, Hometown, there is a long drawn out section that dies right down into a piano solo and the girls have suggested that I play something more mellow but still keeping time. Do you have any suggestions as I'm kind of stuck for ideas? Well, Mary, uh, what you heard me play in the intro was obviously playing some shaker and some drum kit at the same time. And shaker is a really good option if you're wanting to move away from hi-hat and you're wanting to move away from ride cymbal because chances are you've been playing time on them so far you know, throughout the song. And if you want kind of like a textural contrast and something a little bit more mellow, so if, you're, if, you know, if that part of the song, the mood breaks down to a nice piano solo, as you say, and things are a little bit more low-key, then a shaker is a really good thing to get into. Now, um, before we get into shaker techniques and patterns that you can play, um, which I think you'll find are relatively easy because especially if you play them in the right hand, there's a good chance you've already been playing those same rhythms with sticks on, on right or hi-hat. So you've just got to learn the techniques. But the first thing that I'm going to show you is you can um, get any number of different types of shakers. They've all got a different type of sound. You can even make your own if you don't want to go out and buy one. And then we'll look at how to grip it, how to get the sounds and play the patterns. And then at the end, we'll check out how to play it in amongst the other limbs as well, which is a little bit uh, tricky with the coordination, but if you understand uh, what's going on with the patterns and you take it really, really slow, it's certainly not rocket science. All right, so the first shaker that I'll show you just to demonstrate some different sounds, this is a Rhythm Tech Live, and of all the shakers that I've got, uh, this is certainly the uh, brightest. So if I was doing, as the name suggests, if I was doing a, a live gig, it, certainly if it was like a commercial thing where, you know, you might be competing against the sound coming out of the horns or electric guitars and things and if things are quite loud this is a really good shaker because it cuts through um, it's it's quite heavy it's 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 heavier than the other shakers that I've got um, and it's it's you know it's a solid sort of sound that really cuts through so let's check out what that sounds like all right so that's one type of shaker then if I go to the complete other end of the spectrum, this is just a little egg shaker that I keep in my stick bag and it's it's very soft in comparison and it's really high pitched, but it still kind of cuts through quite well. All right, so that's a little egg shaker. You can get that for like a dollar or two at the music store. And then this one here, I actually just made myself. What is this? A glucosamine and chondroitin. Okay, back in the gym days. Um, and this has just got, um, let's have a look, about a third to a quarter of rice inside it. So, you know, have a look through your pill jars that you've got at home. Fill them up with rice, see what they sound like. You can also check out, you know, like a Coke can or like... Red Bull can, something like that. Um, they can sound okay. Um, in my experience, they, they don't cut very well um, and they kind of crumble a bit. But if you're kind of stuck and you've got no other option, you can try that. Make sure that, of course, that whatever you use, if you're using like a can or something like that, of course, gather it up so you don't have rice flying all over the place when you shake. Um, but this is a, a little one that I made myself. I've actually used this on recordings. It's, it's a little bit more mellow and it doesn't cut as well as the others, but it still sounds really nice. So it's not always the case that loudest and brightest is the best. Of course, there would be plenty of situations, like if I was playing in a, like in a small acoustic ensemble, something like that, then this would certainly be the better option and this would just be overkill. But if I was playing in a louder band, that would cut through better and this not so well. So it depends on the musical environment that you're playing in. And of course, Mary, you're the only one that will know what will work for you. So make sure that you choose one that's going to fit the situation that you're playing in. That's the first thing. All right, so I'm going to go back to this Rhythm Tech Live Shaker just for the purpose of, of this video. It, it cuts really well and you guys will be able to hear really clearly what's going on. Um, so the first thing is we've got to make sure that when we pick up the shaker, we need to get some sense of balance of the rice in the shaker. If we pick it up from like here, and even if we put it horizontally, that doesn't mean that the rice inside is horizontal. It's probably still all banked up here. So I can I can feel already that because it was sitting like this in my floor time, when I picked it up, even though it's horizontal now, I can still feel it's kind of weighted this way. So make sure that you're probably better from picking it up from flat. 
Um, make sure that the rice is in the middle. And then we're going to grip it between the flat of the thumb here and then the rest of the fingers just come round on the front there. It's quite easy as far as the grip is concerned. You just want to make sure that it's flat the whole time. If you're shaking away and it's like that or it's like that, it's really not going to work particularly well. Now, when we play the grooves, you can hear that I've got both accents and non-accents, okay? So it's not all loud and it's not all soft. Okay, like with grooves, when you play ghost notes and accents or whatever, just in or just in any instruments playing, you have dynamics, okay? And so when I play, and this is the pattern I'm going to teach you today. It's a nice simple pattern. It's a really common one, and it works really well with the drums. You can hear I'm going loud, loud, soft, soft, loud, loud, soft, soft, loud, loud, da, 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 da. So let's talk about how to achieve both those sounds, both the accents and the non-accents. And I'm going to start with the non-accents first because this is easier. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're pivoting at the elbow. Okay, now I remember when I first started playing Shaker, uh, it felt a little bit weird to me because I was used to doing a lot of stuff with my wrist. I, I use my wrists a lot when I play drums. That's sort of part of the technique that I've chosen to go for and works well for me. Um, so I was sort of going like... You know, like that, using my wrist and you know, I, when I teach kids how to, how to play shaker and whatnot, they're doing the same thing and it doesn't work. And basically what's happening is you're getting this kind of arc that you don't want. When you play shaker, remember, you're, you're trying to throw an entire body of rice from one side to the other side. So you want as much as possible things to work in a flat line, okay? And if you're doing these curves back and forward, it's not really going to um, achieve that. So even though we're only moving a small amount when we deal in the non-accents, still try and keep it as straight as possible. Don't be going back and forth with the wrist, okay? So that might feel a little bit weird in the beginning, deliberately keeping your wrist straight because it kind of goes against a lot of the stuff that we do when we play drum kit with sticks, but nonetheless, that's how you're going to get a consistent sound, all right? So you're probably only moving a few inches like this. And if we think about what the rice might be doing, it's probably going from about there to about there, something like that. It's, it's moving a really small distance, all right? When we want to do the accents, this is a little bit trickier, the technique, and also there's a bit of lag time. So when we do the accents, we move back, so it's a greater distance, and it's also faster, okay? And then what that does is it flings the entire body of rice all at the same time. And we actually start with the upstroke. So if we're thinking of it like slowly in 16ths, a one e and a two e and a three a four a one a two a three a four and we start on the a of a so four e and a prior to beat one so four e and a one and we come towards us on the a all of the as so all of the fourth sixteenths of each of the four beats we come towards us and then on the down beats or the down or the numbered beats one two three and four we move away from us all right so we're getting right two accents now the thing about the accents is that as i said before there's this kind of strange lag time and the first time you play shaker uh, at least this was my experience was um i felt like i was really behind the beat because um it's not like when you hit a stick onto a drum as soon as you make contact and as soon as you're in that position of being near the drum you get the sound immediately okay that's not the case here there's a there's a little bit of time you've done the motion but the rice hasn't caught up yet it's kind of like cracking a whip you're here but you've got to wait for the whip to come down so you might find that when you start practicing and you get a hang of this groove and you start doing it maybe to a click or you start doing it in a song that you're you need to be a little bit ahead of where you're playing so what i'm doing to make this groove is i'm going Ah, uh, one, they're big movements, and then small, small, okay? So it's back, forward, and then it's back and forward, but small distance, okay? And it's all just at the same note rate, so it's... So you can mix and match, you know, you, you heard there when I was playing the groove, it was basically the same thing, but every now and again, if you want to put in you can, you don't have to stick to that pattern, you can, you know, do your own variations on it, etc. And, and, but that's the techniques that I've shown you, okay, so it's either the, the, the small non-accents with a small movement, or the larger one.
All right, now let's check out how to play the shaker in amongst the groove, which is really where this lesson is going. Um, now, as you heard me just play then, I was playing really simple pattern with the bass drum and I was playing rim tap instead of just a regular snare hit with the left hand. So that's very deliberate. So if we're going for a more mellow sound, because we're playing in a more mellow part of the song, as we know it's a breakdown, it's kind of a piano solo in this instance, then we're probably not going to be playing doom do do cha do 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 you know all these complex kind of figures between a uh, kick and snare and, and tom work and stuff like that so um the the rim tap is a, is you know is certainly a lot softer and, and a little bit more mellow than the than the backbeat and all of that uh, that you would uh, typically normally be playing on the snare so um the first thing that we're going to do because there's a fair amount of coordination involved in this and it's probably something that's going to feel really unfamiliar in the beginning but like everything you've just got to work at it we're going to just play bass drum on beat one. All right, we're going to play an entire bar, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a boom, and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, three, four, one. All right, so that's all you've got to do. You've just got to think, even if you're finding that really difficult, just think, just practice doing that. All right. So let's try that. We're just going to play bass drum on beat one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Once you can do that, try bass drum on one and also on three. So with both of these, because they're both the beats, they're both landing with the away accent, right? When I'm moving away from my body. Let's try it. One and three on the bass drum. One, two, three, four. And I'm not, I'm not hitting the bass drum hard either, okay? I'm deliberately playing a little bit softer. Now, let's check out We'll go back to, just to keep it easy, we'll go back to playing bass drum only on beat one. And we're now going to play snare drum with a rim tap on two and four. Okay, so with a rim tap, making sure of a couple of things if you've never played a rim tap before. Palm is on the drum, about four inches of the stick hanging over the rim. We're trying to get that kind of clock sound, which is basically imitating claves, the short fat sticks. And when I come down with the rim tap, I'm also coming down with the other three fingers as well. And what that does is that helps mute out some of the overtones and harmonics that in this situation for this spe specific sound I want, okay? You can, of course, take them off if you're doing kind of you know, Latin sounding things with the right stick and you want to get those overtones. Well, of course, you would leave them off. But in this case, palm down, back of the stick pivots, fingers come down when I make contact, four inches of stick hanging over. Really important that we get the correct sound. If the stick's too far over, it's too deep. And if it's too far back the other way, it's really thin and weak. All right, so around about three to four inches should be fine. All right, so now we're just gonna start out with the hands only, all right? Get rid of the bass drum just for a second. We're gonna play two and four on the snare with the rim tap and the shaker. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One. Now we'll throw the bass drum on and beat one only. One, two, three, four. Three as well. Three. One, three. Now, I'm going to give you one final example, which is probably the hardest of them all, and that is where I'm going to play this pattern with the bass drum. Okay, except for that double at the end. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm playing on 2E and A, uh, which is the fourth 16th note of beat 2, I'm playing the bass drum. So, in other words, instead of playing it on beat 3, like I did in the previous example, I've just brought it early by 1 16th. So, that sounds like this. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a. And then also on beat 3 and, I'm going to play the bass drum. So, I've got 1, 2, 
a and. So it's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. Now the thing about this is because we are now playing one of the two in between sixteenths, which is either the second or the fourth. In this instance, the fourth, two e and a, one e and you know one two three four. That means that you're going to land that note only with the up motion towards you. Okay. All the other notes, be it the bass drum or the snare drum figures, all land on the away motion. Okay, so let's just check that out. One, two, three, four. Let's check that out with this shaker. Egg shaker. Alright, so I hope that gives you a few ideas. These are really good things that you can do in breakdown sections or in sections of music where things need to be a little bit more mellow and you don't want to play in the hi-hat and you don't want to play in the ride cymbal. Um, it's a little bit different, of course, you know, forward and back and how do I coordinate that with the drums and all of that, but as long as you understand and you kind of really micromanage in the beginning, okay, everything lands forward except that 4 16th, that lands back. If you know what you're shooting for and you're prepared to put in the work, then you can absolutely play this stuff. In the next lesson, we're going to check out the kibasa and some different grooves that you can play with the kibasa. Kibasa is a really, really cool instrument and it's not too difficult once you understand how to get the slides and the different sounds. I used that actually on one of my recent Hands and Feet clips. And it's a really good follow on from what we've just done. So check that out as well. Make sure you email us, guys. We want to hear from you. That's what ICanPlayDrums.com Custom Studio is all about. We get our ideas from you guys. You guys instigate what's happening. We have a chat. We figure it out and then we get it filmed. All right. We'll see you next time. Hi and welcome to iCanPlayDrums.com Custom Studio. With I Can Play Drums Custom Studio, we do things a little bit differently than most monthly subscription drum lesson sites. Our lessons start with, and are driven by, you. Each week, our subscribers email us what they want to learn next. It could be a specific issue they have with their technique, their reading, a new style, drum solos, how to do gigs. And we film expert lessons addressing our subscribers' specific problems. With the thousands of free YouTube lessons and a plethora of subscription sites around, it can be tough to get heard if you have things you want addressed. We don't dictate what lessons you will learn next in a fixed curriculum. We listen to your emails and chats and build customized video lessons specific to your goals every single week. Our lessons are filmed in multi-angles along with our easy beat clips and additional resources like play along MP3s and printable PDFs. Student lesson requests are submitted via email by any given Friday. Lessons are filmed over the weekend and go live the following Monday through Thursday. Each week, one of these lessons is uploaded free to YouTube to help put the word out to future subscribers. Our input into helping you achieve your goals doesn't stop there. With I Can Play Drums Custom Studio, we're committed to giving you real lesson progression so you get measurable results. At the bottom of these custom lessons, we provide you with subsequent lessons that build in a natural and logical progression, so you keep improving and don't lose your way. Sign up is easy and instant, and the pricing is about one-tenth what you would pay in a year of weekly lessons. Click the link below to get started.